Obviously, it is a question about polynomial, and then we are going to apply remainder theorem or factor theorem. So there is a function given like this. It's obvious that x and then x squared later on, so it is a cubic function. Question say that x minus 2 is a factor. That means when the function is divided by x minus 2, then the remainder will become 0. Because factor, that means it is divisible. When we divide by x minus 2, there will be no remainder. And from the remainder theorem, there is a quick method to get the remainder from the function. It's the function and then we replace a suitable x inside in order to make this become 0. So that means when x equal to 2, then the function will equal to 0. So similar reason, we are going to translate it before we evaluate each of that each of them. The second sentence may be more difficult to understand. When fx is divided by this divisor, then the remainder is kx plus 64. Basically, we are going to apply the same logic. When fx is divided by this divisor, then the remainder is not 0 this time, it's not factor, but they tell you that the remainder is kx plus 64. We are going to apply the remainder theorem in order to express the remainder in terms of the function. So now the problem is what is a suitable x to put inside to make the divisor become 0. If we solve it in our graph, when x squared minus 4 equal to 0, x squared equal to 4, and x is equal to positive or negative 2. So we have two possible cases. Only one line is not enough. We have another conclusion at the back. In squares, you know that you are going to consider two separate cases. But the problem is many of you forget that this is x also. Basically, we are considering when x equal to something, the situation become like this. When x equal to another something, the situation become like this. So when we consider specific cases, x is locked to a certain value already. We can't accept it still our variable is not moving anymore. So when we put inside this case, we put 2 inside. And then in another case, we know that it's also effective when x equal to negative 2. Now we are going to see which one we are going to evaluate first. Maybe we evaluate the first one. We just simply replace every x by 2. So 2 times 3 times 2 plus 5. And then square plus p times 2 plus q equal to 0. We will have an equation with unknown p and q, so we need more information in order to solve a specific solution for p and q. But anyway, 2 times 6 plus 5, which is 11 squared. So we have 2, 4, 2. And 2p plus q is equal to negative 2, 4, 2. So we can just stop here. We don't have any more information here. And then the second thing, f2 is equal to 2k plus 64. But don't forget f2, the whole thing is just simply equal to 0. So we can replace this one by 0. It's 2k plus 64. So the first unknown we can find is k. And k is equal to negative 32. After that, we evaluate the last one. Similar reason, we just put x replaced by negative 2, and then 3 times negative 2 plus 5 whole thing square, plus p times negative 2 plus q is equal to negative 2k plus 64. Negative 2 times negative 1 bracket square. And then don't forget k, we already know that it's negative 32, so it's give you negative 2 times negative 32. It's negative 2 times positive 1. Beware the sign, don't make careless mistake. And then this will be 1, 2, 8. Therefore, we have the second equation. Of course, in order to get P and Q, we just solve the simultaneous equation, then we can get the answer. Then I just simply add two equations together. We have 2Q while P is eliminated. 2q is negative 1, 1, 2, and trust q is equal to negative 56. And p is equal to negative 93. So we have all the values p and q and k, 
and it's better for you to copy down and write a statement p is equal to negative 93 q is equal to negative 56 and k is equal to negative 32 uh, the key point is still, uh, always start from the question what they give and then what you write and then you just evaluate or write down any implication from the information. So part B, how many version rules is much easier. So in case you don't know how to solve it, you just simply assign some value for P, Q and K, something like that. In part B, just like what I mentioned, we start from the question, they ask us to solve if x equal to 0 and then we are going to check x equal something or x equal to something or x equal to something and then we are going to check among these three roots are they uh, rational roots how many rational roots there so start from here fx we know that fx is this expression so we replace it by this format and beware that p is known is negative 30, uh, 93 and then q is also known negative 56 we are going to solve this one uh, this format is not good enough. We are going to express it how many x power 3 plus how many x squared plus how many something like that and then we are going to factorize it. Whenever we have a higher degree than 2, that means not quadratic cubic or even power 4, then we are going to try our best to factorize it equal to 0. Then we can draw conclusion. First factor equal to 0 or the second factor equal to 0. Then we can downgrade the equation and solve it later. So just expand it by identity 9x squared plus 2 times 5, 10, 10 times 3, 30 plus After that, we can try to factorize this one. Uh, you better think, is there any common factor so that you can make the number smaller and then easier to handle? But in this case, we don't find any common factor. Therefore, we are going to factorize it directly by non division. Uh, we read the question again. They should give us some hints about any factor. They give us x minus 2 is a factor. So we can find another factor by long division. In long division, uh, my practice is I just write down the coefficient one by one in certain space. It's not necessary to write down x power 3, x power 2, x power 1, something like that in your draft. But anyway, we divide by x minus 2. So uh, one, 9 divided by 1, we have 9 times. And then 9 times negative 2, we have negative 18. So subtract them, we get 48 minus 68. And then negative 68 minus 96, beware the sign. We have 28. So 28 and also negative 56. We don't have any remainder. It's also support our calculation. So we have 9x squared plus 6, 48x and then plus 28. Therefore, x minus 2 equals 0. So x may equal 2 or the second fa factor, 9x squared plus 48x plus 28 equal to 0. Uh, you can use your calculator, Formula 1, to have a quick check where this, uh, the roots here is rational or not. Uh, usually, you find that the decimal do not stop and you don't find the pattern, then it is irrational number. But if you have to prove irrational number, you need to use the quadratic formula. Express in terms of third form, that means with a square root something like that. Otherwise, it's not strong enough. If you use calculator, you'll find that it can be expressed in fractions, so you will have the roots. Or you try to solve it by cross method, it should be 3 times 16 to become 48. So I will try... Uh, positive 2 and positive 14 this combination then I will get 48 later on and then so therefore if we factorize it we have 3x plus 2 and also 3x plus 14 x equal to negative 2 over 3 and also x is equal to negative 14 over 3 so all of them are rational number is because 
uh, I can express in terms of ratio. So we have to say clearly. They ask how many rational roots. We just simply say three rational roots. Then we finish the question.